And you're connected also to the Yiddish writer Shmuel Niger. Yes, yep. Any stories you have about him? Uh, Shmuel was my great-grandfather's uh, brother. Uh, and, you know, I, I um, didn't hear as many stories about him growing up. And it was interesting as I became interested in, in Yiddish and came to the book center and began studying Yiddish and h how often Shmuel's name came up. And, and um, one of the, uh, the documents that I actually brought with me, though, is a letter from Abe Kahan to my great-grandfather, basically politely stating that uh, while uh, Kahan appreciated the offer uh, that my great-grandfather made to inquire with Shmuel to write for the foreword that uh, Kahan wanted to decline, um, on account of, among other things, uh, the notion that Shmuel's Yiddish language and rhetoric was a little bit too, um, I think, highfalutin is, is the Yiddish term. I'm not positive if that's Yiddish or not, but uh, that um, it, it wasn't exactly the the, um, the the language for the masses that, that Kahan envisioned. And this is a letter from 1914. Uh, and it's interesting to me both in terms of the, uh, you know, this letter that is, is written by Kahan, who's, you know, I, I began to read some of his, um, his writing and, and uh, but just seeing it as this, this moment where a sibling was trying to get work for a sibling um, not long after they'd, uh, uh, you know, um, arrived stateside, so.